and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our second part of the Theros Beyond Death complete set review. We're on to blue now. Uh, we just finished up with white. We're on to blue. Um, we're going to be going through every single card, giving it a rating, talking about how it could be used in standard, um, if it can be. Um, and uh, let's see. So for our rating system, if you're, if you're kind of newer to this, so we're going to be giving it an A, a B, a C, a D, or an L for limited, for cards that really won't see standard play. So those are L's. Uh, A's are going to be cards that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks. You think they can be like four ofs in multiple decks. Um, so we're talking like Questing Beast, Murderous Rider, Bone Crusher Giant, like those kind of cards. Those are A's. Uh, B's would be a card that sees a good amount of standard play in a support role. Um, but, you know, like so like Torbrand, Thran of, Thran of Redfell, Realm Cloak Giant, Foul Mire Knight, you know, some cards that could be four ofs, but only in just like a like one deck. Um, or, you know, maybe an impactful card like Torbrand, but it's only really played in one deck and maybe not even as a four of, uh, kind of like Realm Cloak Giants. Like those are Bs. A C is a fringe standard card used as filler for certain decks or a playable build around card. So some examples could be like Claim the Firstborn. You know, you see that in standard summon, like the sacrifice decks. Um, Outlaw's Merriment, it would be like your playable build around card. You know, Outlaw's Merriment's definitely playable. You can build around it, have fun, but it's not like a, um, a big part of standard. Or Epic Downfall, so like a narrow sideboard card, but still kind of regularly used. And then Ds are cards that you'll just rarely see in Standard, but can fill a role for a fringe deck or as a fringe sideboard card. So cards like Cauldron of Eternity, uh, Witch's Vengeance is a fringe sideboard card, Sir Farron the Henchammer. So like cards that you that you will rarely see in Standard, but not that much. Um, and then L, those like I said, those are limited. Those are just cards that shouldn't see any Standard play. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're on to blue. Um, as we talked about before, I've been really busy this um, preview season, and I haven't been able to look at all of these cards, to be honest, yet. And so this is kind of more of a, a first reaction somewhat. Um, but yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments what you think, if there's cards that I'm underrating or overrating. Um, you know, you got uh, Twitch chat is here along with me um, that will be able to... Um, you know, help out and uh, say what they uh, think of the cards as well. But let's get started. All right, so we got Illyrios Enraptured, just two and a blue for a 2-3 human. Legend so it's a legendary creature also. Illyrios Enraptured enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untap step if you control a reflection. And whenever Illyrios enters the battlefield, create a 3-2 blue reflection creature token. This is definitely something that's a little different. This is not this is not uh, this is not a card style that, that you usually see very much of. Um, so we have we have a 2-3 three for 3 that whenever it enters it brings a 3-2. Alright, and it and and it uh, enters tapped and it stays tapped as long as you have the 3-2. So okay, so you're you're getting a 2-3 body and a 3-2 body for 3 mana. And you know, like your three-two body gets to attack and block and everything, and be everything in combat while your two-three just stays tapped. And then whenever they kill your three-two, um, then you get to untap your two-three, and then your two-three gets to start attacking and blocking. Hey, what's up, Yager? Um, so Illyrios itself is is legendary. The creature token you make is not legendary, um, but yeah, it is a five-five for three with two bodies. If you think of it like that, but you can only use like one body at a time unless you have a way to untap Illyrios. Obviously, like there are ways in standard that you can use to untap it with Kiora um, being like the main one that, that comes to mind. Um, but yeah, yeah, the flavor is amazing on this. It is just spot on. That is true. Uh, the reflection and everything. Um, but yeah, you can flicker it. You get another 3-2 if you flicker it. One thing that, that uh, yeah, so, it's, it, so yeah, this works really well with like Charming Prince. Right, like if you want to Charming Prince, flicker it there. One thing that kind of um, kind of stands out of like reading this here, like the first thing that I kind of thought of of using this would be as a uh, card with um, Neoform and uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar. This seems like a really good creature to sacrifice. You know, like it's a three, it's a three drop that brings along a three two. Then you sacrifice it and go get a four drop, but you still have the three two left behind. 
Um, so yeah, this seems like it works really well with like Neoform and Vanifar as, as like a really good card on the curve for, for that kind of deck. Um, oh yeah, the new Thassa. The new Thassa gets to flicker stuff for pretty cheaply, right? Well, what is, how does that work? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm still kind of learning these cards. So Thassa is, okay, it's just at the beginning of your end step, you flicker a creature. So yeah, every, every end step you get to flicker. So yeah, that that and that curves really well into Thassa. Just make another three two. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, the reflection is the reverse stats being a mirror. Yeah, but it's a mirror image kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's so yeah. So basically, I think there's there's a lot of ways to kind of use this card, but it is definitely going to be like a, a filler card um, that like certain decks will use, but like not something you'll just kind of see everywhere in the format, but. Um, yeah, this could be a really nice card that makes other cards better. So let's go with like a C with this. I could see this being like how Claim the Firstborn was like a four of in the, the Sacrifice deck. Like if there's like a, a deck kind of built around this being, I think this is kind of a good C. Um, and it has, it has potential. Like, yeah, if there is like a Vanifar deck and a Thassa deck, like if Thassa gets it to be really big and you play this, it, it does have, this is the kind of card that has, um, higher potential to be even better than that um, but I think I'm going to go with a B or sorry a C <laughs> this is the wrong letter okay it's the best blue and common for limited I could definitely see that I yeah I think this is an awesome card for limited getting the two bodies like that all right Ashiox erasure Two blue blue enchantment with flash. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you exile target spell. Your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. Whenever Ashiok's Erasure leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to its owner's hand. All right, so we're talking about spells on the stack. So you have to have you have to keep four mana open. So this is a counter spell that costs four mana. Um you know, so, you know, you're going to have to be playing, like, an instant speed deck kind of thing for this. Like, it's difficult to leave four mana open. Um, you know, <clears throat> but, yeah, like, it looks like we have some some varying opinions there in chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can target your own spell and then your opponents can't cast it anymore. Yeah, I mean, you, you guess you can do that. Um, cast Thought Erasure and then... Ashiox Erasure, the Thought Erasure, and then they don't get to Thought Erasure you. I don't, I don't know. You do that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so like spells that can't be countered, you know, like this is a, a perfect answer. Like this is the this is the way blue can answer because it gets rid of just spells, not not uh, things on the stack or not like things it gets rid of spells, but it doesn't counter. So um, Shifting Ceratops, like how blue can't answer Shifting Ceratops, this gets rid of Shifting Ceratops and they can't cast Shifting Ceratops anymore. Whenever Ashiok's Erasure leaves the battlefield, as you see, it says return the exiled card to the owner's hand. So unlike uh, Ixalan's Binding, Banishing Light, all that kind of stuff, it's not whenever you get rid of the enchantment, the card goes back into play. This goes back to their hand, so they do have to spend more mana on it. So, you know, like they do have to spend more time, more resources to recast the card. That's a really big difference. That's a that's a huge deal. Um a big plus for Ashiok's Erasure there. It doesn't just like go back on the stack. Like we kind of saw this with Spell Queller. Um, like if you played during Spell Queller days, like this is very similar to Spell Queller, but like whenever you kill the Spell Queller, then you cast the spell. This, when you kill the Ashiok's Erasure, you don't just cast the spell. It goes back to their hand. So then they got to recast the spell also. Um, and then, yeah, if you have another Ashiok's Erasure, you can get rid of it again. This seems like this is going to be the best against people that are not playing enchantment removal. Um, you know, against maybe like, you know, green decks or green blue decks, you know, like stompy decks or whatever, like decks that don't, that aren't just like playing incidental enchantment removal where you can get the card and it's gone for good. And also, um, they're not casting other spells with it. Cause they're, they're not playing things that to kill enchantment kind of thing, at least, you know, like pre-board. But yeah, I think this is a pretty powerful card. Uh, it's definitely a powerful effect. It's just, is it, is this worth four mana, because, you know, four mana, these these days, four mana is like the, as far as control decks, four mana is like where you're wrathing. Um, are you able to wrath and then also, like, can you play this in like a, a wrath-heavy deck kind of thing like that? Um, 
Uh, there is a blue card that makes an enchantment lose all abilities. Then they never get the card back. That's that's a cool little party trick. I don't know if I don't know if that's really worth it to to put another card into your deck to keep them from getting it back when you could just play another counter spell. I don't know if that's really worth it, but um, permanents with no permanents with hexproof do not have hexproof on the stack. So so yes, you you do get to quote unquote counter anything with this because yes, it it exiles spells. So yes, you, anything this yeah. So you do get to get rid of all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so basically this is definitely a good card. The the only thing that's kind of holding it back. Um, or like the thing that I'm kind of worried about it with it is that it does cost um, four mana. And so like how, how much can we really play because it is a four mana card. I think I'm going to kind of give this like a B, I think. Um, I mean, this is definitely something that's really good for flash decks. And uh, that third line is really important. If it didn't have that third line of your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card, probably wouldn't be very interested in playing this at all. It's it's certainly how like that third line definitely makes this much more playable. Um, yes, I'm absolutely sure you get to exile shifting ceratops with this, and then they don't get to play shifting ceratop. How is this better than frilled mystic? M most, I mean. A lot of times it's not, um, but uh, a few things like one, you know, shifting ceratops, you know, you get to, get to get rid of that. They and uh, they can't play anymore. But it's about that. It's about that other clause, you know. Like you get rid of like hydroid, you know. Like think about like for blue decks, how how like blue counterspell decks also for how annoying hydroid crisis is because you know like they play a big hydroid crisis, they draw a whole bunch of cards. Sure, you counter hydroid crisis, but they drew a bunch of cards. Probably drew in, drew into another crisis. Like that's how it kind of always works. And then they play another hydroid crisis, and you you just get buried. Well, with this, you know, you at least get to, even though the first crisis they get to they get to draw some cards, you at least get rid of the crisis. It's gone for good. Um, they don't get to cast more Hydroid Crisis to continue to draw cards. Um, and yeah, it, it does does get rid of Nexus of Fate too. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a B. Yeah, good against like rule decks for sure. Let's give this a B. You need to play. You need to be able to play a lot of instants with this kind of card. I don't think you just put this into like a tap out blue. Like I don't think you just put this into Esper Control that's playing like Thought Erasure also, and you're just like a tap out like Thought Erasure sweepers that kind of deck. You're not putting Ashiok's Erasure in your deck. You need to be very heavy on instants. <clears throat> All right, Brian Giant, six and a blue, five six. This spell costs one less to cast for each enchantment you control. So if you have tons and tons of enchantments in play, you can play a very cheap 5-6. Is that ever going to happen? Are you going to be putting Brian Giant into your deck to hopefully play a cheap vanilla creature? Probably not. I do like I do like how it matches up against like Lovestruck Beast. That's pretty nice. Um, but this is probably not going to not going to work. So let's go ahead and just give this an L. Does seem very good for limited, I agree, but probably not constructed. Calafi, Calafi, maybe Calafi, I don't know. Beloved of the Sea. Three blue, blue for a star three. Its power is equal to your devotion to blue. So on its own, it has two devotion. Uh, again, I guess just to kind of, I mean, a lot of people have questions about devotion. Basically, devotion always checks. All of your permanents in play. That's that's all it looks at. It doesn't look at spells on the stack, stuff in hand, anything like that. So you just look at all the permanents in play. This would be a permanent in play. And you count up the blue mana symbols among all those permanents. That's your devotion. So when it's on in play by itself, it's two. So it's a two, three at the very worst. And it can only go up. If you have an erasure, Ashiok's Erasure in play also, then you get two more. So now it's a four, three. You have this thing in play. Now you get another one. Now it's a five, three. And so on. All right, but anyway, creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent cost one more to cast, which is pretty nice. You know, like they want to target your stuff, it costs one more. Um, we kind of see that with uh, 
uh, and I can't think of the name of the card. There's a War of the Spark had an uncommon Planeswalker that cost three and a blue that had your spells that your opponents cast to target your Planeswalkers and creatures cost two more. Um, I want to say Kiora, but it's not Kiora. But uh, there we go, Kasmina. Ah, I could just think of the K letter, and I wanted to say Kiora. So yeah, it's kind of like the Kasmina effect. Um, I think to play this card, you know, you got to be an aggressive deck with blue. Um, you know, so I like how much is this actually going to see play? I, I don't know. Yeah, it does seem like a, a good limited card um, for standard. You know, we're just kind of playing a generic creature that doesn't really have an ETB effect and is just a, a three drop. It's not really like the most, the, this is not the, the color that really values creatures on the ground, like three, you know, just like mid-range creatures on the ground that don't really have an ETB effect. This isn't really the, the color for that. Uh, so with that being said, um, like I'm trying to think of like how this is going to be more than just an L, like more than just like a, a limited card. Like where you'd really see this. And I, I don't think that that's really kind of going to be the case. I think this is just a, a limited card. Speaking of limited cards, that's our next one. Chain of Memory, single blue instant target creature gets minus four, minus zero until end of turn. Scry two. Nope. Standard's pretty powerful. That is not good enough. Deny the Divine at two and a blue instant. Counter target creature or enchantment if that spell is countered. Yeah, well, it should be because it says counter. Um, then you exile it instead of putting it into the graveyard. All right, so we get a three mana counter spell that exiles. So this, for this to see play, exile has to be super important because if you think about, uh, like I would rather have uh, Sinister Sabotage most of the time because you get to surveil one, like that is awesome. Exile has to be really, really valuable for Deny the Divine to start seeing play. Not only that, but exiling cards that really that cost more than three because you know, cheap cards are going to be kind of, you don't really want to play a three mana counter spell to answer one, two, or even three mana cards. So you're really going to need a high density of four, but then really more like five, six mana cards that you want to exile and that can be countered before you start playing Deny the Divine. And yeah, like that stuff can be, that, that can include escape cards that get to be replayed from the graveyard. That can include gods that are indestructible. They're like really hard to, to kill. You just want to exile them instead. That could that could be like the cards like uh, the God Eternals from before, you know, like God Eternal Oketra, um, like where you where you just exile it and it doesn't uh, you know doesn't resolve. I mean that that would just a regular counter spell would do that anyway though. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of escape in the set, but that doesn't necessarily mean that escape's going to be everywhere. But if it is, you know, like this could be a good option. All right. Uh, but yeah, like, but then this is just also a narrow counter spell. You know, you don't get to counter instant sorceries, planeswalkers, that kind of stuff. You only counter creatures and enchantments. And so for a three mana, a three mana counter to be narrow, that's not great. That's not great. So that exile has to be super valuable. All right, so let, let's go. Let's go with D for for our rating. If this countered anything and exiled, you know, we're talking about a lot better rating. But with it being narrow, that's pretty rough. Eidolon of Philosophy, blue for a one-two, and it's an enchantment creature, which you know that can be can be more valuable. And as six and seven, six and a blue, sacrifice it, draw three cards. That sounds pretty awesome and limited. I think for standard, we're just going to give this an L. Um, it's just too much mana and everything. Like You'd have to really play like an aggro deck where you want just one random one drops, but then you just also have this. But in that kind of deck, you're not going to be playing that much mana for this to really do anything. But yeah, you have to really want that enchantment to play this card. I'm going to give it an L. All right, the Elite Instructor, two and a blue, two, two. When Elite Instructor enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, so it's just a, it's just a three mana, two, two that loots once. There's nothing wrong with that. That sounds awesome for limited, but again, we're talking standard. Standard is going to be more powerful than that, and so we're going to go ahead and just give this an L. Glimpse of Freedom, one and a blue instant, draw a card, but then also has escape. 
two and a blue, exile five other cards from your graveyard. All right, so this is the the card that to, to really compare this to would be um, Radical Idea. All right, Radical Idea, one in a blue, instant draw a card, and then it has flashback of you discard a card or whatever the flashback is, is called, but it has that with uh, you discard a card and you can recast it. So this, you can recast it for two and a blue, but you have to be able to exile five other cards from your graveyard. But the thing to think about with escape, or just the thing to remember, is that escape's not a one-time thing. It's not like, all right, you do that, and then, all right, now your card's done. You can escape it again. If you got five more cards in your graveyard, you want to spend two and a blue again, you can draw a card again. So as long as you have five, as long as you have five cards in your graveyard to exile, you can pay three mana to draw a card. And you can keep on doing that as long as you have five cards to exile from your graveyard. That's a lot of cards. Um, oh, you're welcome, Thunderbunk. You're welcome. That's a lot of cards. And uh, I, yeah, five, five is a very hefty cost. Um, I wouldn't say this is a worse jump start because if you are, if you are playing, because um, if you are playing a, a deck that can fill the graveyard, you know, but so yeah, if you're playing, if you're playing a deck that can fill the graveyard, you know, like an Arc Light Phoenix deck. And you can get five other cards to, to exile. You know, like you could get to keep on doing that. The good thing about like, like exile does get rid of the cards to ca to count for like instants and sorceries in your graveyard. But the card the cards these days like crackling Drake counts the, your cards in exile. So like crackling Drake wouldn't really be hindered by moving a bunch of cards to exile. Overall, I, I don't I think that radical idea is probably a little stronger or and or they're basically about the same. Radical idea doesn't see that much play either. Um, I don't really expect this to either. Um, but yeah, let's give let's just give this a D, uh, maybe a D plus. Um, D plus. Why not? Let's give it a plus. Okay. Uh, this looks like a fun card to pronounce. Ichthyomorphosis. Ichthyomorphosis. Ichthyo. Ichthyomorphosis. Oh, that's a lot of letters. Um, escape the new set. <laughs> All right, anyway, two and a blue, enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchant creature loses all abilities and is a blue fish with power and toughness zero one. So you just turn stuff into fish. Ichiomorphosis. Itch. Itchiomorphosis. <laughs> That's tough. All right, anyway, this is an L. This isn't a card that should really see any standard play. There's... Um, similar cards in standard that cost one in a blue, but then they make them into one ones. And I think that it's, I think that that the two mana make it into a one, one is better than three mana, make it into an O one. The extra mana is uh, a big deal. Um, but yeah, I don't think we really need to play this card in standard. Kiora best, the sea God five blue, blue for a mythic saga. First chapter, create an 8-8 eight, eight blue Kraken creature token with hex proof. Second chapter, tap all non-land permanents target opponent controls, and they don't untap during their controller's next untap step. And then we have a third chapter, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls and untap it. This card looks really good. This looks like a very good finishing card, as, as y'all are saying. Um, uh, Somebody says a better agent of treachery. I wouldn't say that. I think this is a, a worse, a much worse agent of treachery. If your if your goal is to steal something, agent of treachery is going to do a lot better job than this thing. This card just kills the opponent. So you know you you make an eight eight, and then the second state. And so like basically we're 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 paying a five blue blue card. Think about like the the uh, decks that you put agent of treachery in. Those are decks with the creatures, right? Like you're probably playing a Simic ramp deck, right? That's playing a good amount of like creatures and stuff. You're probably playing Nissa. You know, you're doing that kind of stuff. And your first chapter is make an 8-8. Your second chapter, tap all non-land permanents they control, they don't untap. So that means their whole battlefield is tapped. You get to attack them. You could probably, at this point, this is now, you know, like, this is you already had 7 mana, and now this is the turn after you have 7 mana. I assume you have a good amount of creatures that you can attack with. 
and that probably kills the opponent if it doesn't their next turn their all their stuff still doesn't untap so you get to attack them again <laughs> kind of thing all right and then uh the third chapter if you get there you get to gain control of target permanent and opponent controls i don't actually see you getting to that third chapter that often i think that most of the time that you're going to be getting to the second chapter and then the game is going to kind of end kind of thing that's that's my expectation for this card um you know like you are making an 8-8 you know with hexproof thing um so yeah definitely looks really really scary in simic ramp um even if simic ramps even if you're like playing the simic ramp deck and you're trying to you know if you're behind you're trying to stabilize that still does a great job of stabilizing because they don't get to like attack with all their creatures for a turn um and you know you get that 8-8 to stabilize and everything too so this this just seems like a card that's really good at winning games and like that that third chapter gonna happen sometimes but i would say a good amount of the time you're not even getting to the third chapter because your opponent is dead but yeah i like the art yeah i really like sagas i like sagas a lot um but even with that like how how much are we really playing this card you know like if you think about like what would you rank you know think about what you would rank um agent of treachery and standard right now um like is that like a i think this is this could maybe see a little bit more play but about the same um so maybe like a like a b plus you know like i don't think it's like an a because a's are really cards that are going to be like you play four of them in different decks kind of thing that's what i'm thinking that the a's are like four of in different decks this isn't really a four of different decks i'm kind of thinking yeah i think like a b plus um because we are still talking about a seven mana card and there are certainly limitations with a seven mana card all right b plus but yeah great great card for a couple of different decks there all right metamize prophecy one in a blue uh for a saga it's an uncommon we got four chapters on our saga we didn't have any sagas every single saga was three chapters last time right was there any sagas in dominaria that had two or four chapters i think they were all just three that's just off the top of my head and thinking of the sagas in Dominaria. So this could be a new thing with four chapters. And I don't think any of the white sagas had four chapters either. So I think this is new, but I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, so they were all three. All right, so anyway, anyway, chapter one, scry two. Chapter two, you choose a card name. Chapter three, when you cast a spell with the chosen name for the first time this turn, you draw two cards. And then chapter four, look at the top card of each player's library. Hmm. all right i guess let's kind of break this down a little bit um all right so you this is your turn to play like you're playing this for two mana or even later on when you're playing this for two mana you get the scry two if you kind of think of um playing charming prince it's like a two two mana two two scry two you know you don't get the you don't get the two two but you get this enchantment that kind of stays out there a little bit so then your next turn, you you say what card you're going to play the following turn. So you're already kind of locking in what card that you're going to play the following turn. Like turn three, you're already telling your opponent what you're going to play turn four. Um, so one, the opponent gets to gets to play around that already. Uh, two, if you don't play the card, you don't get any extra bonus. Because then because then your third turn, you you kind of have to play that that spell with that name. If you don't, you you don't get anything. So you, the third chapter does absolutely nothing for you. But if you do, you get to draw two cards, and that's really nice. Drawing two cards for two mana is really good. But spending two mana, scrying two, turn one, and then two turns later, you draw two cards. Like, how much does that card even see play? Like, two mana, scry two, in two turns, you draw two cards. I mean, that's that's fine, but that's not spectacular. Um. You can pick island, but you have to cast the card. You don't cast islands. But you can choose any card name, so you can choose island. That would be a legal choice. But it would not be an effective choice. Um, the The best thing pr probably to name are cards like, yeah, like Opt, even another Metamized Prophecy. Stuff like that, that like things that are very cheap and that... Uh, aren't necessarily interaction like so like opt is like the best thing possible to name 
kind of thing. Yeah, like a wishing well would be a good. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Fable Passage doesn't work. That doesn't do it. Like Fable Passage does nothing with this card. No, the name card does not have to resolve. It's just whenever you cast the spell, it triggers and you draw two. So it does not need to resolve. Um, but honestly, so like just just think of it like that. And then all right, so then the fourth chapter is just look at each card and the look at the top card of each player's library. That's not a very valuable thing. Just a, a one of look at the top card. That's not a very valuable um, effect. So two mana scry two, which is good. Basically, that helps you hit your land drops if you if you need lands or if you already have lands. It, it helps you get more spells. Like that's good. So scry two, and then wait a turn. And then, like, so then you scry two, you do nothing else the rest of that turn. And then your next turn, you're not doing anything. And then the turn after that, you finally get to draw two cards. That's still not even that great of a card. Um, but it's just downside from there, because you have to name what card you're going to cast, and then you have to cast said card. Think if they had, like, a discard spell that breaks it up or anything like that. Or, like, they do something that you're like, oh, man, now I need to cast this other thing. Um, that's not, there's just not good. And then, like... Honestly, for one in a blue, I think I'd rather just be casting Discovery almost every time. I think I'd rather just play Discovery, scry two, and then draw one card. You get one less card, but for such, you certainly get the one card. And you also, if you're playing a blue-black deck, you get the other half of Discovery that's just upside as well. So I'm not I'm not very big on this Metamize Prophecy. Um yeah, I mean, you can name you can name like Kaya's Wrath, and then you don't even have Kaya's Wrath in hand, but then your opponent doesn't like extend to the board because they're like, "Oh, you're just gonna play Kaya's Wrath." But then you you just play two mana to scry two. <clears throat> um, so yeah, not not a big fan of this. Um, the where this could see more plays if, if enchantments are really important, you know, like if it is an enchantment that uh, that you know you can grab because you you have things that like draw enchantments kind of thing, and and so like if the enchantment part really really matters then this can see an uptick of play uh, for that. But yeah, so I think I think we're going to be going with like a C minus. I think I'd probably put Discovery as like a C, and this is like a C minus, or about, about the same, maybe even Discovery is a C minus, probably around there. It's like, it's like a card you could play in Standard. Um, yeah, yeah, constellation cards. Yep, that's true. Constellation cards do have, yeah, constellation cards do want you to chump to dump cheap enchantments. That's a good point. So like that's where that that card will really get more valuable. But as a card, just comparing it to discovery, I like discovery more. But if the enchantment part really matters for your deck, you can play it. Um, I no shimmer of possibility is a lot better in fires than that. I would much rather play shimmer of possibility. Shimmer Possibility replaces itself. That thing doesn't. And digs you four cards to find fires. No. All right. Memory Drain. Two blue, blue, instant counter target spell scry two. So basically, we're spending an extra mana to scry an extra one. Uh, and scry is even worse than surveil. You know, we're thinking like the counter spell surveil one for three. I think this is just a limited card. I don't like four mana is, is too much for this effect for standard. So let's go with an L. Nadir Kraken. Nader Kraken? Probably Nadir. I don't know. If, if you know how to pronounce it, you know, let me know. One blue, blue, two, three. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a one, one counter on Nadir. Nadir? Nader. Nadir. Yeah, okay, so Nadir. Okay. Or Nadir, Kraken, and create a 1-1. One, one. All right, so you you play a 3-mana 2-3. Three three. Each time you draw a card, you can pay an extra mana, then you put a counter on this, and then create a 1-1. One, one. All right, so I think that... I mean, I think this card's good. Um. Yeah, okay, yeah, so we get some people... That they really like this card. Um, I think this card's good, but I I think from just like whenever this card was pre previewed, I think people were overrating it. Uh, one, the art is really cool, like that Kraken in the background with that like that skyline, like that that looks really cool. Um, 
but too, I mean, I, I kind of feel like this is similar to, I mean, it's kind of like the exact opposite, but it's kind of like Mentor of the Meek. If you think of like Mentor of the Meek as like a three mana 2-2, two, two, that whenever you play a a small creature, you pay one, you draw a card. And this is kind of the opposite of like when you draw the card, you pay one, and then you get the small creature, you know, and you put the counter on it. But it's a similar kind of thing, and, you know, nobody really plays Mentor of the Meek. Like that, that one mana, like... Like, I don't know if, like, just spending one to put a counter on your thing and make a 1-1 one, one is going to be what you want to be doing a lot of the time. Because you kind of need your mana for other things. This card is definitely at its best whenever you don't have other cards, right? Like, if you have a lot of other cards, you, you don't need this thing. Or, you know, like, you're not going to be... If your mana is kind of bottlenecked and you have a lot of cards and you don't have much mana, you're not doing anything with this. But then if, if you just have, like, this and you're flooding out... Um, <laughs> I don't know. That that's kind of kind of ironic, right? You flood out. You want a kraken when you're flooding. I don't know. I don't know if I was like in a flood. I don't think I'd want to see a kraken. That's me. But uh, could this be a good cyborg card for control decks? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. It depends. Couple of things for this being a cyborg card for control decks. <clears throat> um. Of course, you know, like, you know, you're, we're thinking of it as a cyborg card. So, like, the opponent takes out their removal, right? And then you then you bring in this Kraken after they take out the removal. Because then you can make, like, ex, you know, extra 1-1s one and, and uh, have more blockers and stuff like that. But if you're a control deck that you're playing sweepers, you don't really want to play this with sweepers. Like, that's that doesn't really work. So, it's, you know, because you're just playing a thing that goes wide. Like, it's hard, kind of hard for, like, 1-1s one to actually trade with cards. So it's like you'd want to play this like after you already played a whole bunch of sweepers. But at that point, like there's probably better things for the control deck to be playing anyway. Um, like for example, like the the Archon that we talked about earlier, as far as like a, a cyborg creature for control, I think I'd much rather have like a 3-4 life linker. Uh, they can also make some 2-2 life linkers and stuff like that, but just even a 3-4 th life linker. Uh, we'll go back to where we were. Yeah, so it it's gonna be kind of it's kind of hard to like find like a, a place exactly where where to put this card, but I think it's gonna. My prediction here is that it's going to play worse than what it reads, that it it reads as a more powerful card as like the actual um, play pattern that it produces. And. Until we, you know, I could be wrong there, of course. We won't really know until we really see it and start putting it in decks and see how it matches up against things. Um, uh, but, yeah. Um, it's Yeah, play it with, like, the Royal Scions. But that's the thing. It's like you have to be spending, like, your mana also each time. So... So you know we'll, we'll kind of see. Uh, it's not it's not something that I you know this is not like an L kind of thing. Like this this is definitely a it definitely has a lot of potential. Like it it it's a card with a lot of potential, but I I feel like it's not going to play that well. That I feel like that the the one mana that you're spending you're gonna realize that like you're like oh mana we used to get one ones for free with Hero of Precinct one like like think about Hero of Precinct one think about how good that card would be if you had to spend one mana every time to get your one one. Like, that's kind of rough, right? Like you want to curve out, you want to keep playing like your stuff each turn. And using all your mana, like saying, okay, draw step now, pay my one for my one one. And now, you know, like we have like all these temples that are like tap lands and stuff. So you're like, okay, well, I'm going to have to pay my one for my one one and I'm going to play my temple in. And then now I don't have very much mana like this turn. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a C. What's up, Forks Not Fox? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, sure, it grows too, but I mean, I don't know, it still dies to everything. Yeah, yeah, I know you don't need spells to, to activate this, but I'm gonna give it a C. I could, I could be wrong on it. I could be one that's that's more powerful. Um, Naid, 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 pronunciations are difficult. All right. Anyway, Naid, Naid of, let's go with Naid, Naid of Hidden Coves. Two blue, two three, enchantment creature nymph. 
as long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. So that's pretty cool. You know, all your instant speed stuff costs one less to cast. That's a that's a neat ability, and that's that's something that's certainly useful. But that's not something that we're gonna pay play a two mana two three to gain. Yeah, if it had flash itself, it would yeah. We're now we're talking if it had flash itself, but it does not. So I'm gonna give it an L. Naya did. It's pronounced Naya did. Huh. I would not have got that. Well, this one's an L. Nixborn Seaguard. No text. It has two blue blue for a two five. That's a good limited blocker. Omen of the Sea. One in a blue with flash when it enters the battlefield, scry two, then draw a card. Two in a blue, sacrifice it, scry two. See, I think I would rather have Omen of the Sea basically all the time than this Meadowmise Prophecy. You know, it has Flash. That's really, really valuable. Um, flash is just, is just you know, being able to play your, your deck at instant speed is, is really valuable. And then, yeah, you scry two, you, you draw the card right away. So the only downside is you're not drawing, like, one extra card. Like, this this just seems something I'd much, much rather play than that Meadowmise Prophecy. And, and, you know, it is also an enchantment if the enchantment matters and then later on in the game in the late game you know gets to just sit out there as devotion and late and you know forever it doesn't just sit out there for you know four turns then and then leaves it gets to sit out there forever and then later on whenever you're both in top deck mode you sack it and you get to scry two to make sure your top decks are better so yeah very very solid a lot i think i, I like it a lot more than the other card i think this is going to be just a a good b a card will see a good amount of, of standard play in a support role um yeah i think this is a b basically because it has the flash and yeah you can teferi bounce it that's that's certainly something you can do um let's go with a b yeah instant speed preordain yep yeah i mean the fact that that's an instant is awesome <laughs> yeah your rock doubles it that's pretty cool. All right, uh, one with the stars, three in a blue, enchantment, aura, enchant creature, or or enchantment. Enchanted permanent is an enchantment and loses all other card types. So you're spending four mana to turn a creature or enchantment into an enchantment? <laughs> That's weird. What's up, Xyladog? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, yeah, so I guess you can, yeah, you can, you put it on your own edge wall innkeeper and then you turn your innkeeper into an enchantment. So then now it's not a creature anymore for them to kill. I don't know. Yeah. We're giving this an L it's to get rid of gods. I, yeah, I guess. Um, all right, we'll give it a D minus basically because this is an aura that you can go fetch with Heliod's pilgrim that bumps it up a little bit. And yeah, I guess you can get rid of a god, but the god still has all abilities. So it's not like it really gets rid of it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's four CMC. All right, I'm gonna give it a D minus, just because you can grab it with Heliod's Pilgrim. All right, Protean Thaumaturge. Protean Thaumaturge. One in a blue, one one, constellation. Like, like, are people just like sitting in a meeting and they're like, have this card? Like, what should we call it? And someone else is like, how about protein thaumaturge? And everybody else is like, yeah, definitely protein thaumaturge, and just writes that down easily. All right, anyway, uh, one in a blue for a one one, and it has constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. You may have Protein Thaumaturge become a copy of another target creature, except it has this ability. All right, so let's so let's talk about how this works. Um, I don't know what Protein means. Um, okay, so you you play you have to play an enchantment. You have to have this in play and then play an enchantment to trigger it. But then whenever you you trigger it, it becomes the top. It becomes a copy of any creature on the battlefield. 
So it could be your creature, it could be your opponent's creature, you know, just as of another target creature. It doesn't say like a creature you control. So if they have like a questing beast, you can turn this into a questing beast or, and so on. And then it still has that ability. So then the next time you play an enchantment, you can then change it into something else. If you want, you can be like, all right, well, now I'm going to have it be something else. Um, protein. 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 All right. Thaumaturge is another word for wizard. Gotcha. Or it means miracles. Those are different things. Uh, this does not get ETB effects. No, it's on the battlefield and it just changes into creatures on the battlefield. But it does get their effects on the battlefield. So, um, you know, like if you can turn this into a God Eternal Oketra, you can have, you know, two God Eternal Oketras out there. So you get to make four fours and so on. It, um, it does get, uh, like, you know, you can turn this into like a Risen Reef. So it's, you know, another Risen Reef in play or an Edgewall Innkeeper kind of thing or you can turn it into a cavalier of thorns and then you get the die triggers you know you'd get the die trigger whenever it does that uh somebody in chat was just saying turn it into a thassa so you know you could if you have enough if you have five devotion and then thassa is a creature then you can turn it into a thassa and then you get double of these but then you need like two different creatures to exile um or no i guess you could just keep doing the same one Legendary rule still applies, but this thing is not legendary. This thing does not turn into a legendary creature. Um, it just becomes a copy of the creature, right? Or no. No, I guess it does turn into a legendary. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it doesn't lose legendary. Yeah, never mind. So no, yeah. So you do not want to clone a legendary card. Yeah, never mind. No, that's that because, yeah, it does not. Yeah. So it will become the legendary creature. Yes. So do not copy legendaries with that. So, all right. So, yeah. So, not not wanting to copy Thassa. Um, so, I think this is a pretty difficult card to actually get to work. You know, you have to play a two-mana 1-1, one, one, which is not a good card to, to top deck. This is a terrible card to top deck. So, you'd have to have it out. And then you have to play an enchantment. And then after you play an enchantment, then there has to be a good creature to copy either in play from you or for the opponent. So, all of that stuff has to happen. And then all you do is you get the copy of that creature. That's a whole lot of work. Um, you can copy your opponent's legendary stuff. Yes, you can do that. You can copy the opponent's that's Thassa. Um, but yeah, so like your Risen Reef quasi duplicate deck that if you're playing this, then you have to put enchantments into that deck also. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think, I mean, honestly, maybe like a, a D, a card that you rarely see in standard. Um, Somebody wants to kind of build around this thing. I mean, I think that's like the highest rating we could go. I don't think there's really like much upside to this thing. Um, you know, it could could be like an L. Like I could just be giving this thing an L. But I guess I'll give it a D. Dig it with a new enchantress. Um, no, I think, I think that it just becomes a copy of the creature. I think the name changes, I think. I don't think it keeps, I don't think it, it doesn't say like that it keeps its same name. All right, Riptide Turtle, one in a blue, 05 Flash Defender. Throw this thing in your Flash deck. No, don't do that. All right, it's an L. Sage of Mysteries, blue for an 02 with Constellation. Oh, yeah, I like the, the turtle, the speedy turtle. Yeah, because they say the turtles are too slow, but they gave you the the fast turtle. But anyway, Azor Beast, welcome to the stream. Thanks, Bird Lux, for gifting out the sub. That's sub number 15. It looks like I'm a little bit behind. All right, uh, a one-mana 0-2. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Um, I think this is also just an L. You'd want to play, you know, a lot of enchantments, then you get to mill a lot, and then it's it's just a I don't know. I don't I don't expect this to 
work too well. Even if you're a, a mill deck or a self mill deck, I mean, Drown Secrets is like the best thing to like follow this up with. Like you play this, then you play Drown Secrets. But we're talking about an O2, and an O2 does nothing in combat. Like it's like you're blocking one ones and that's it. And we probably want to just put better cards in our standard deck. Sea Gods Scorn, four blue blue sorcery, return up to three target creatures and or enchantments to their owner's hand. So you get triple the bounce for triple the mana at sorcery speed. This is an L. I agree with everybody else saying this is an L. I don't think that's going to be something that's going to be good enough for standard. So it's for limited. Um, you can bounce your own things, you know, like you, you play like a saga or two and like your saga is did like the first or second chapter or whatever. It's about to do the third. You see God scorn it. I don't know. We're, we're putting better cards in our deck. Six mana too much. All right. Three and a blue three, two flyer at the beginning of your upkeep return up to one other target enchantment you control to its owner's hand. So it's not a May ability. That is, you have to do that. So if you have another enchantment you control, you put it back into your hand. Um, never mind. Up to one. Never mind. Up to. I missed that whenever I started reading that. All right. Well, it's not a May, but you can choose zero. Right? Yeah, I feel like you can choose zero. Anyway, we're probably not playing a, a four mana, three, two flyer. But if you really want to bounce your enchantments... If you want to have a deck filled with enchantments that you want to bounce, you know, you want to bounce your Omen of the Sea, you want to bounce your Metamize Prophecy, if you want to bounce those things, you can put a Shimmer Wing Chimera into your deck, I suppose. I'm giving it an L. Shoal Kraken, four and a blue for a three five with Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Another card for limited. Um, you can kind of see like the the theme of limited here with blue. You know, getting these enchantments in play. You know, we've got some enablers with the like Omen of C seems like a very very important card for limited for blue. Um, and you know the the prophecy you get them in play or you know you you cast them with all these things with constellation. You know, just all these things have constellation. Um, and then you know you bounce them, put them back in your hand, cast them again. Then you draw more cards, discard. You mill your opponent out. I don't know. Do all that kind of stuff. All right. Sleep of the Dead. Oh, no. They didn't kill the puppy, did they? I hope not. Uh, blue Sorcery. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Uh, escape has three and exile three. So you can, you know, tap stuff and you escape some. And you can tap some more stuff. Not really anything that we want to be doing in standard. So we're going to give this an L. Also... Okay, it's just sleeping. It's just sleeping like he's dead, but not actually dead. Just taking a nap. Just sleeping. All right, Starlit Mantle. One in a blue <clears throat> enchantment aura. It has flash. Enchant creature you control. When Starlit Mantle enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains hexproof until end of turn and also gets plus one, plus one. So, you know, like this is like two mana gods willing, basically. You know, you, you give, give your creature hexproof. I guess. I mean, it's like Lazotep plating kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it is an enchantment for the Enchantment Matters cards. Um, Lazotep plating can do a whole lot more stuff. But this does give your creature plus one, plus one also. So it could be a trick in combat. You know, the, you know that could be a thing also. Um, it's only hexproof until end of turn. It doesn't give it hexproof all the time. Um, yeah. I'm just going to give it an, an L as well. Stern Dismissal, blue for an instant. Return target creature or enchantment and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Okay, okay, so we got Unsummon. Unsummon, but also you can bounce enchantment. So it's just upgraded Unsummon. But Unsummon can bounce your own stuff, and this doesn't bounce your own stuff. So like you can Unsummon your own Frilled Mystic. You do not get to Unsummon the, your own stuff with Stern Dismissal. So not really exactly upgraded Unsummon. Um, but it can it can bounce enchantments too. But you can't you can't bounce uh, 
Yeah, the question is, why would you ever play this when you have Brazen Barber? The answer is you wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I think this is just an L, honestly. I don't, I don't think you really ever play this card. I'm going to give this an L. Yeah, like, unsummon, being able to bounce your own creatures is really valuable. You don't get to bounce your own stuff. S Stinging Lionfish. One in a blue for a 2-1. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. Two mana, two one isn't like the worst stats. I don't think we're really playing this either. Man, blue does not seem very good. <laughs> this is just L's down the board. Sweet Oblivion. One in a blue sorcery. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, but then it also has escape. Three in a blue. Exile four other cards from your graveyard. Well, if... This could definitely be played in a mill deck. Um, you know, that's that's really the only place that you're playing it is in a mill deck. I don't even think you're really even playing this in a self mill deck. Maybe I guess, but mostly just for like a mill deck. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna get that's I'm gonna give this a D because mill decks exist. Um, yeah, I do as a beast. Yeah, definitely look back on the previous cards for. For the ranks i gave him look back and yeah I'm, there's definitely some cards i'm right about some cards i'm not you know like it um but yeah I like looking back because like looking back and and trying to learn for future sets each time i do this um all right thassa deep dwelling i think like i think last set i think i did really good with with Throne of Eldraine. The only thing is I just I really underrated the adventure cards. But besides that, I think I hit everything else pretty good with Throne of Eldraine. Uh, so yeah, Thassa, three and a blue for a six five indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue is less than five, Thassa isn't a creature. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control, and you may also spend three and a blue to tap another target creature. Yeah, this card is a sweet. I really wish Thassa cost a three mana, not four. Four mana is a little much for this. But yeah, being able to flicker your your creatures every single turn, you get to flicker a creature. That is awesome. I like uh, ETB creatures. I like flickering my own creatures. I think that like that's definitely something that's pretty fun to do. And so Thassa, you know, fits right there. Um, you know, whether you're flickering like your Risen Reef or um, I don't know, you flicker Charming Princes that flicker other things. You can flicker, like, the creatures that make you discard cards. There's not, like, a, a ton of, like, great ETB creatures right now in Standard, but there's there's definitely some. You know, there's, like, the um, Elite Guard Mage, you know, flicker that thing. That's pretty good. Um, but, but, yeah, like, we need to... I think we need to have some more, and we'll kind of see whenever we go through the... The sets here we kind of need some more creatures with etb effects still in standard um yeah good with the new perforos because like what well, like the perforos like puts it into play but then you're supposed to sacrifice it but then you flicker it with thassa so yeah it works works very well there but yeah this is definitely a, a card that i just i like i really like the card design um is this better than the old thassa no no the old thassa much better um yeah, Old Thassa was like one of the very best cards in standard, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you get if you get this with Agent of Treachery, that's GG on one of the sides. Either you kill them or you steal too many things and you draw too many cards because of Agent of Treachery. <laughs> and then you mill yourself out. Um, the old Thassa at three mana and also making things unblockable and scrying. Like, you killed your opponent so fast with the old Thassa. <clears throat> um, 
you think the previous cards being so bad has you overrating this a bit well yeah well i'm not saying that this is like one of the best cards in standard i'm just saying i really like i really like the card like the, the design and everything like this is my kind of card that's what i'm saying i'm not saying this is like one of the best cards in standard kind of thing but yeah like this is this is my kind of card i really like the design all right but anyway yes yeah, so let's get a rating all right so um c is a fringe standard card probably a little bit better than that b is a card that will see a good amount of play in standard in a support role i think that's where we're probably looking a's are cards that are going to be like four ofs in multiple decks this isn't that's not really thassa um so you know like if we is thassa thassa is probably like on the, like the tor brand level so we're probably looking at like a b um <laughs> a all day um i think that's is probably like tour brand level i mean i think this is like a a two three of and, and maybe some different decks maybe a little bit better than that better than that so like yeah maybe a b plus i like giving we'll we'll give i mean i just like i, I like uh Thassa. so let's go b plus b plus is cooler than b yeah of course it's going to be going up to youtube yep everything that i do on stream is also on youtube there's like i don't really stream stuff that's not youtube also um so yeah we'll go b plus there so far we're only like a color and a half in but this definitely seems a lot less powerful than throne of eldraine which i don't think is necessarily a bad thing but that could also be hurting our ratings a little bit all right thassa's intervention x blue blue yeah i mean pairing it with like cavalier thorns absolutely uh x blue blue for an instant you choose one look at the top x cards of your library put two of them into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order or counter target spell unless its controller pays twice x um okay so let's let's think of this so at three mana for the second part the counter target spell unless the controller pays twice x so at three mana it's counter target spell unless they pay two that's pretty easy to do i mean but a lot of times you'll you'll be able to counter the spell because a lot of people a lot of times you're tapping out and you counter the spell at three mana um a two mana this does nothing so you, you need to at least have one for x um so at four mana you know you're at counter the spell unless they pay four which that's most likely countering it you know five mana you're counter the spell unless they pay six so you know, like you're this is probably countering spells at three four mana for the top part you have to have four mana for it to really really be the best i mean i guess you could do um three mana and you just look at the top card of your library and put it into your hand so it's just three mana it's draw a card at four mana it's just draw two um so this is just this is just worse divination at instant you know it's four mana divination at instant speed so you really need to be going to like five mana you look at the top three and then you put two of them into your hand and one at the bottom like that's not even very good i mean that's that's really not very good five mana look at top look at three put two into your hand you know like we have uh precognitive perception which is five mana scry three then draw three and this is draw two um so basically neither neither mode and you know you go to six mana you look at four and then put two in your hand i mean that's still not even that great um hey what's up kerns so neither mode is is very good when you look at like other cards in standard but the flexibility um is is really where this card uh shines um the flexibility of of being able to be a an expensive counter spell or an expensive divination but you get to choose and it's instant speed if this is a you know like obviously you can't really have sorcery speed counter magic but um you know like that's that's where you can maybe play this is that you know you put it in a deck with a ton of instants and you have um hey pimp on fire thank you so much and you have um, a card that can just kind of do do what you need it to do at different times. You just kind of find a place to cast it. Uh, but it's not anything that's like going to be like your your plan A, basically. Um, Finder says it's great if you're winning or losing. I would not say that is the case. I, this is not a great card if you're losing. Four mana, four mana to draw two when you're losing is not good. That's not a good rate. This is basically only this is basically a card that's good when you're winning. 
when you're winning you get to counter their spells and you're the battlefield's clear and then you have time to cast the cast it for the first part uh, but no when you're behind this is not not a good card um yeah so this is this is chemistry's insight on one side or a counter spell like basically you have to choose do you want to draw two like chemistry's insight or counter a spell kind of thing yeah chemistry you get to jump start all that kind of stuff um so yeah i'm not i'm not very impressed with this card um is this a card they'll see a good amount of standard play? Honestly, I don't. I don't really think so. I, like standard's very powerful, and I just think that we're gonna have just better. Like people, like you're just gonna be playing better things. Like, like Simic Flash putting this in their deck. Like they already have. Like Simic Flash already has awesome four mana cards. I don't think Simic Flash is putting this in their deck. Uh, like blue white control is like kind of like where I see this scene, this being played. Is like a blue white control deck. Um, that that's where I could definitely see this being played. Is is like a blue white control deck. Um, so like I don't I, I think it's probably like I don't think it's like a C I think it's maybe a little bit better than a C. I guess C like claim the firstborn was like a four of in like a popular deck and this was kind of kind of like that same kind of thing. I think it goes like a C plus either either a C or a C plus is where I'm at. Um, I'm I'm not Adam. I'm not looking at how anybody else graded if that's what you think I'm doing. I'll I'll go with the C plus. I, I think like the control deck is re really where you you want to use it, and basically because like late game with the control deck, this is still a pretty good draw of where where when you have when you have the lot of mana in the late game and you have eight or nine mana, um, then I uh, then then you get to you know pay it like for eight mana look at the top six cards put two of them into your hand kind of thing you know basically turn it into a drawn from dreams at that point but obviously you're spending like your entire turn it's like when you've already stabilized and you're already basically going to win and you're just like look you know looking at something else like that um let's see where else uh let's see somebody says uh somebody said like with wilderness reclamation yeah i could definitely see it working pretty well with wilderness reclamation because wilderness reclamation you can have a whole lot of mana and you just want something that can do something for a lot of mana it's still a whole lot worse than playing like an expansion explosion at that point though um a fires of invention i guess i didn't really talk about fires of invention with this um i guess it's pretty bad with fires of invention for the second part because you can't you can't play stuff on your opponent's turn it'd basically just be you can tap your six mana and look at the top four and put two into your hand it's just a whole lot worse than drawn from dreams with fires so no, never mind. So yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just go with the C plus, but I don't, I don't love the card. All right, Thassa's Oracle. Next card over here, blue blue for a one three. Whenever it enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library, and then the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So the obvious thing here is that you need to be self-milling. You have a self, you know, you're self-milling, you're getting rid of the cards in your library. You play Thassa's Oracle, your devotion is less than or equal to the number of cards that you have, you win the game. Um, as far as kind of playing it early on in the game, it's also just a 1-3 blocker, which is good. The If you don't have any other cards in play, the first ability is kind of just worse than scry two because you look at two and you put one on top and then the rest on the bottom i guess it's up to one on top so you don't so you can put them both on the bottom that's good you can put everything on the bottom that's good but if they were both very good cards you couldn't put both of them on top of your library you know like if you're doing like a scry two and you had like two cards that are awesome and you're like yes i want to draw both of those well you only get to choose to draw one and you have to put the other on the bottom that could that could be something that is a little bit of a downside. Um, <laughs> play this in the sideboard against mill decks. I guess so. Um, no, Toti, that is not correct. A's are decks. A's are cards that are four ofs in main decks of multiple decks. Of multiple. 
this is not a this is only like a, a four of in, in one deck um, but uh, yeah and um, <clears throat> so so this would be like a C a playable build around card that's if it's playable you know like so it, it's playable you build around it and so like that this is like a C for the grade scale um, which I think that's probably about where we're at. Um, I think you can build or I think there are a lot of, I think there are enough, um, enough tools to be a self mill deck and standard. Obviously you have to, you have to worry about, um, milling yourself too much. You have to worry about your opponent countering this while it's on the stack, like that kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess if they kill this, like if they kill this with the ability on the stack, you know, if they use like a murderous rider to kill it, um, I'm not sure exactly how that would work. I guess it would be, you would just look at less cards because then your devotion to, I guess the trigger would still happen, but your devotion would change. So like if you had devotion for five, whenever you played it and they kill it with this on, with the trigger on the stack, you would then have devotion to, for three because you, you'd lose two and still look at the top three. And then if three is more than the cards that you have, um, yeah, you can keep flickering it with Nissa or with uh, Thassa. That that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's probably a very good lim win con in limited. Um, there's a lot of stuff, uh, self mill stuff in limited, but there is just a lot, lot of good at mill cards. Um, you know, like there's like Wall of Lost Thoughts and uh, and then the the other one with Adventure also that you can get like a bunch of O 4s in play that kind of add up to your devotion that are also milling you. That's something you can be doing. And obviously, Drown Drown Secrets is the card that would make any deck like this work. Drown Secrets is awesome. So I'm going to go with the C here. All right, Thirst for Meaning, two and a blue, instant. Uh, draw three cards, then discard two cards, unless you discard an enchantment card. This card's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, Thirst thirst for Knowledge, as you know, Thirst for Knowledge is, is it just a... a pretty highly played card in just different formats that was the same thing except for an artifact not enchantment um this is uh this definitely makes you want to play a good amount of enchantments and so you get to discard enchantment because draw three discard one um pretty awesome you know of course you do have to discard an enchantment but that's not bad at all so it's basically divination plus you loot once and that's a really powerful effect um, so yeah, I like, I like Thirst for Meaning, um, where I could definitely see this game being played a lot in standard is, is maybe like a Fires of Invention deck, you know, Fires of Invention's an enchantment, like think of, think of like when you play Fires and you have like, you know, you have two Fires of Inventions and you have that extra one and you're like, well, what am I going to do with this extra Fires of Invention? Boom, Thirst for Meaning, draw three, which is all Fires of Invention decks once, once to draw three and you discard your extra Fires. Um, so that's really cool. And there's just, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of good enchantments in standard and obviously a lot of good enchantments with the set. I could certainly see this being uh, played as in as just like a role player in a lot of different decks. Um, if you have escape cards, you know, you can draw, you know, you can discard the two, you know, like if you if you don't have your enchantment, you know, you can discard two extra lands. Like sometimes you just flood out and you just discard two lands, you know, draw three, discard two lands. That's really not bad either. You know, some, sometimes that happens. And yeah, sometimes you discard an escape card. You know, it does help fill your graveyard for escape cards as well. Um, yeah, I like it quite a bit. So I think this could just be like a B, maybe a B plus. Let's go with like a B plus. Um, I like this card quite a bit. I think that's a card that you can you can play a lot of. Yeah, Esper Stacks. Yeah, Esper Stacks plays more artifacts than enchantments, to be honest. Um, but yeah, you, you can have like your extra Othakaya over there. You don't really love discarding Doom Foretold, uh, but yeah, you get rid of like an extra Othakaya kind of thing. Dang. Sorry to hear that, Rex. Dang. Sorry to hear that. Um, Threna Threnody Singer. One in a blue, one three, flash flying. When Threnody Singer enters the battlefield, target a creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus zero until end of turn, where X is your devotion to blue. 
Okay, so basically, I think to play this card, you want to be playing a Flyers deck, you know, like the like the Azorius Flyers kind of stuff. I think that's like really where we're playing this. Um, Mono Blue doesn't really exist anymore, um, but even Mono Blue, like it would probably want to be like a two power card. I'm not sure if like, maybe I guess maybe Mono Blue Hagro could play this, but you're we're probably not playing a one three, even though. This can basically be like a 1-3, gain some life, um, or help you block and everything. Um, no, this is this is not powerful enough for like Simic Flash is not playing this at all. Um, yeah, this is this is not, I mean, Simic Flash has a tough time playing Wild Wildborn Preserver, which is just miles better than this card. So you're looking at like maybe maybe mono blue aggro or or uh maybe Azorius Flyers. I think those are like the two spots that could again maybe put this in um so we're gonna go with the d i mean there i'm not yeah because like this this is a card i think you'll you'll see in standard you'll rarely see in standard but we'll, we'll go with the d all right thrix the sudden storm three blue blue for a four five flash flying spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered this card is pretty incredible. Five mana, four, five flash flying. It's a huge body. It has flash and it has flying. That is amazing. Like this card is awesome. The only thing kind of holding this thing back, I guess, is that it's legendary. And when you have, you know, you have one, you can't really have another kind of thing. But yeah, this, this card is just awesome. <laughs> like this is a card that, that Simic Flash wants to play. Like this card is just awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can make as far as like the last ability. The last ability doesn't really matter that much, honestly. Just looking at five mana, four five flash flyer. That's very very playable. Um, that's that's just really good stats for a creature. You know, like uh, if you kind of compare it to like Dream Eater. The reason why Dream Eater doesn't see as much play is because it costs like six mana, which is just which is probably one too many. And, you know, that 4-3 body doesn't get to block as much with the 3 toughness. This having 5 toughness being a 4-5, that is awesome. Um, but then, yeah, you can you could put this even in, like, a Kiora deck uh, where you draw a card off it because it's a 4-5. And then also, like, with Kiora, you have your more expensive stuff. Uh, make those cost less. You know, make your Hydroid Crisis cost less um, and everything like that. And, you know, obviously then that stuff can't be countered as well. This card is really good um yeah it's a giant yeah so you want just guy giants so <laughs> yeah you make realm cloak giant to a better supreme verdict yeah i mean you can do that sure why not um yeah make your own cloak giant cost less this thing's just really good um yeah it's good in simic ramp um yeah and it's an elemental i didn't even think of that like with the risen reef it makes it even better yeah this card's just awesome um the only reason why this wouldn't be like where why this wouldn't maybe be an A is because of being legendary. Maybe you can't play like four of all the time and stuff, which you probably aren't. Um, but because it's a five mana and a legendary card, um, maybe it's not an A. Maybe it's an A minus. I think we haven't really given out very many A's though. Let's just give this thing an A. Uh, would you play this in Bant uh, for Nissa to be four mana and can't be countered? Yeah, I mean I don't know why you wouldn't. It's just such a great blocker. Um, where else? I mean, I think that I think this makes blue tempo decks everywhere much better. I think this makes like Brazen Borrower a lot better. Like, uh, just as far as like be other decks besides Simic, I think it's a lot easier to play blue tempo decks with Thrix being a card. Um, you know, whether that's just you know that's blue plus any color, blue red. Like you know, blue red would love this. You know, that could be blue white. Um, you know, we talked about blue green. I mean, that's just blue plus any color, even, even mono blue, I guess even, but like, yeah, like Gadwick costs one less Gadwick can't be countered, like making Gadwick not be able to be countered and also cost one less. So it draws you another card. Like think of how amazing this is with Gadwick. Like you, you end step play your Thrix, you untap Gadwick. Boom. They have to counter your Thrix. Cause if they don't counter their Thrix, you know, then your Gadwick can't be countered. This pairs so well with Gadwick. Um, 
so yeah, really like this card. So I'm going to go with an A. Like Flash, uh, how is Gadwick uncountable? Because of this. Because because your Gadwick, you know, you it's going to be a, a, co a spell with CMC 5 or greater when it's on the stack. And so that means it costs like the one... Well, I guess it won't... Maybe it doesn't actually cost one less. Because when you cast it, it doesn't. But when it's on the stack, it can't be countered. Yeah, so it'll be CMC five plus on the stack. So maybe it actually doesn't cost one less because it doesn't. I don't. I don't know how that exactly works. But on the stack, it shouldn't be able to be countered on the stack, as far as it sounds. It sounds like, even if it doesn't cost one less, that's not really that big of a deal. <clears throat> um, <laughs> the mono blue Gadwick Thrix deck. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely do both of those together. But it it seems like you could just play another color also like you don't have to play just mono blue you know like it's pretty easy to play like red and play your bone crusher giants and stuff like that or anything else uh but yeah very very good card i'm gonna give this an a flash is always the most underrated keyword when looking at cards in a, in a new set um a card with with you know being able to play instant speed is a really really powerful thing all right, Towering Wave Mystic. One in a blue for a 2-1. Whenever Towering Wave Mystic deals damage, target player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. So it can mill a little bit, but we're going to give a a Goblin Piker. A 2-mana two 2-1. Two we're just going to give that an L. Triton Wayfinder. 3 in a blue, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's still too much Teferi. I mean, you can also... I mean... And get rid of Teferi, but this card works great with Teferi. <clears throat> you know, like you're playing Teferi, your opponent can't play instance, you get to tick up, they think you're playing like whatever sorcery, they like attack, and you play Thrix to, to block. <sighs> they don't attack, you time wipe. All right, uh, Triton Wayfinder, three in a blue, three, three. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, it gains flying. Nope. L. Uh, Vexing Goal, two and a blue for a two-two flash flyer. I don't. I don't think we're playing three mana for a two-two. Um, even though it has flash and flying, so like even like the the flying decks, like I still don't think they're playing three mana cards. Like three mana is just too much. There. So we're gonna go L. Wave Break Hippocamp. Uh, two and a blue for a two-two. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. If this thing had flash itself, this would be um, even better. But yeah, so you need a, so the fact that it it your three mana card dying to stomp with Bone Crusher Giant being a, a super highly played card that I don't think that's really going to change. Like Bone Crusher Giant's really popular, um, so that's not not great stats at being a two two, and you get nothing from playing it. So if you play it, it dies. You get nothing. You have to like play it and then also play a spell during your opponent's turn. Obviously, if it just sits around on the battlefield and you keep playing you, over multiple turns, you know, so, like, if you do that, then it still stays around. Then your next turn, you play another spell during their turn. You draw another card. You know, like, it's... It just seems like, like, the instant speed decks, like, aren't just aren't going to be playing this. Um, but, it, you know, it could. So, like, I think we're kind of, like, at a... Uh, I think we're kind of... But, it, obviously... a. Sp a card that just says draw a card and that you get to do that multiple times, that you have the ability to draw multiple cards. Like there's there's definitely a, a pretty high floor to the card. Um, so I think I'm going to be going with like a C minus or a D plus. I think we're kind of going in there, even though I, I don't love it. Yeah, combos with blue ley line. I think I'm going to go like C minus with it, even though I don't. I don't love the card. But again, there's a pretty high floor. Yeah, Opt is like the best thing to, to play with it. You know, like four mana, ha play this, and then play Shocker Opt on the opponent's turn. Whirlwind Denial. Three and a blue instant. For each spell and ability your opponent control, your opponent's control, counter it unless its controller pays four. This is, basically, this is the... Uh, this is like the Hydroid Crasis counterspell, right? Like that's that's like what this is known for. 
right? Because when Hydrokrasis is on the stack, it's the spell on the stack, and then plus the ability on, goes on the stack as well, the cast trigger. This would counter the cast trigger and counter the Hydrokrasis for each of them unless they would pay four for each, which they're not, they're not kind of doing. So this is like the blue answer to Hydrokrasis. Um, but yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can, yes, Doom Foretold, uh, yeah, they sacrifice their Doom Foretold, and then you play Whirlwind Denial, of course, if they have an extra four mana, they could pay that. It doesn't, um, yeah, it, it, it is amazing against Storm, of course, uh, that's, that's really where it is, but yeah, the Planeswalker Ultimate, but again, they can just have four mana, so it's not like this is a hard counter spell, remember, because if they're if they're just like Planeswalker ultimating, they probably didn't just like tap out and then Planeswalker ultimate. They probably just untapped and then Planeswalker ultimated, and then they were probably like, oh, okay, I'm gonna pay my four. Um. But yeah, you can you can do like, uh, you know, if you if you have this and your opponent like fetches with you know like turn turn four, they crack you know th then they play their Fabled Passage because they have four mana, crack Fabled Passage, boom, you count you you spend your mana you. You just stone rained them. So you just pay three mana for stone rain, I guess. Um, yeah, you can counter a walker ability, but do you really want to spend three mana and a card to get rid of just like one walker ability? Very good about Lucky Clover. Yeah, that's true. It's very good against Lucky Clover. That is true. I really like it against Lucky Clover, too. So like Hydrocrasis, Lucky Clover, those are those are probably the two best applications in standard. Um, yeah, Nimble Obstructionist did do this better, definitely. Uh, will it replace Mystical Dispute? I mean, they do different things. Mystical Dispute, you won against like blue decks for counter wars. Like they just do different things. So the answer would be no. Yes, yeah, so a Mayhem Devil stack. You would counter each one unless they pay four. Like these are all just like things that it can do but it's like are we really like having a card designed in our deck just for that and uh trying to keep the mana open and for all of that kind of stuff sure yep can counter all the draws from a midnight reaper post combat if if that's a thing that happens um like these like there's things that it can do but like realistically are these situations going to come up that well it's basically crisis and clover yeah, like those are like really the the real things. Like the more the more popular Crasis it Crasis is, the better this card is. Same thing with Clo Clover. The more popular that is, the better this card is. Without those two cards, I don't think that that there's really enough reason to play this. Um Yeah. Uh counters cat returning and trailer crumbs trigger. Sure, but you're also using a card for those. I don't know. I don't Nah. Like, they're not really using it. You're not really trading with a card at that point. You're just trading with, like, their Trail of Crumbs ability and Cauldron Familiar ability. Yeah, other formats. Yeah, sure, there's great great things in other formats for it to do. Um, Innkeeper. So you counter an Adventure Creature and the Innkeeper trigger. Or, like, Risen Reef. Risen Reef's ETB, isn't it? So I wouldn't do that. So yeah, uh, yeah. So like adventure stuff with in that respect also an innkeeper trigger plus their creature that they cast. It's good there too. So against adventure against crisis. Uh, I think so. I think kind of like what we're looking at here is like maybe like a C to C plus. C is like a narrow, a narrow but still regularly used cyborg card. So thinking of like epic downfall. I think we're kind of like this area of like this being like epic downfall kind of thing. Um. You know, or like not good against, but good like Epic Downfall is. I think it, it can do that as well. And yeah, sure. It's yes, I understand it's a counter on anything on the stack, um, but we're not usually playing like you. You'd rather have like a regular counter spell. You know, like you can play Sinister Sabotage, stuff like that. But yeah, we'll go with like a C plus. C plus. And last card, Witness of Tomorrow's four and a blue, three, four flying, pay four, scry one, put it in your limited deck. L. Okay, so there we go. So that is blue. Let's kind of go back and, and see what our top five cards of blue were. 
Looks like number one, our only A was Thrix, the Sudden Storm. Um, B plus, we had one, two, three. We had three B pluses. That was Thirst for Meaning, Thassa, Deep Dwelling, and Kiora, Best, the Sea God. So those are our three B pluses. And then for our fifth card, there was only one B, and that was Omen of the Sea. So I guess those are our top five cards in blue. Okay. Um, all right, so there we go. So that's blue. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that like button and leave those comments. Let me know what cards that you like more than what I, what I gave or what cards uh, uh, you thought that I was given too high of a grade, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, thank you so much for watching part two, the blue section, and I'll see you for black here just in a little bit. Click on over there. All right. Thanks for watching.